Welcome to Grace Abounds. I'm Pastor Jen Shaw, and in this podcast, I'm sharing my Sunday sermons from St. John's Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California. I'm so grateful that you've joined us, and I trust that these words build you up in faith, hope, and love. As I've shared in previous sermons, about 11 years ago now, I lost 100 pounds through eating less and exercising more. And while I've managed to keep about 80 of it off all these years, those last 20 pounds, they're tough. And it doesn't help that I'm a stress eater, and these are stressful times. So recently, I went to a nutritionist for some guidance. And while she patiently told me most of what I already knew, there was one reminder in our conversation that stood out. Food is the fuel of your body. Food is delicious, and food is comforting. But primarily, food is what makes our bodies run. If we don't fuel our bodies properly, we don't run properly. What we eat and drink every day impacts us in body, mind, and spirit. What we take into our bodies matters. What we do with our bodies matters. All of our scripture readings for today invite us to take in and act with wisdom, to come and eat and drink in the goodness of God, to feed and be fueled, to live in the fullness of life. In Proverbs 9, the invitation comes from wisdom herself. The book of Proverbs is a collection of words of wisdom attributed to King Solomon and other writers. In chapter 1, the author of Proverbs explains that these words of wisdom are offered to give instruction to people of all ages to help us do what is right, to give sound, practical advice for living our everyday lives in the best possible way. And then the author writes that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The Hebrew word for fear here, yarat, does not mean terror. Scripture declares throughout that the Lord is gracious and merciful and abounding in steadfast love. The word used here for the fear of the Lord means reverence, respect, awe, a deep appreciation for who God our creator is and how we are to live as God's creation. And then the author invites everyone to listen and learn, to gain insight and understanding, to grow more mature. In chapter one and throughout Proverbs, the author personifies wisdom as a woman. The Hebrew word for wisdom is the feminine noun chukmah, and it means, broadly speaking, skill in action, technical craft, religious acumen, administrative capability, artistic ability, scientific expertise. Wisdom is demonstrated in all walks and circumstances of life. Wisdom is the practical ability to do things well, having knowledge and experience and sound judgment, knowing what is good to do and doing it. Throughout Proverbs and other Old Testament writings, wisdom personified is closely associated with the spoken word of God, the creative word that brought forth the heavens and the earth and the plants and the animals and us. God said, let there be, 
and it was so. And the revealed word of God, scripture, divine wisdom that makes known to us how to live in relationship with God and each other, how to live lives of integrity, how to live well. In Proverbs 9, wisdom builds a house and prepares a feast and invites everyone to join her. The construction of the house includes carving seven pillars. Seven is a number in scripture that represents fullness, completeness, wholeness. And in that time and place, pillars were only used in buildings of substantial size and quality. Wisdom builds a sturdy, big, beautiful house. And the feast that wisdom prepares is also of substantial size and quality. Because it was expensive, meat was not typically the part of a meal for the average family in the ancient world. And wisdom mixing wine indicates that she is adding spices and herbs to make it even more flavorful. I can't help but think of enjoying my sister's mulled wine at Christmas. And then wisdom sets the table. Imagine the food, the setting, the company at this wondrous meal. And after wisdom does the work of preparing a home and a home-cooked meal, she, sending out her female evangelists, invites people to come and eat and drink. An invitation in particular to those who don't already know her, those who are not wise, who are not mature, who are not practicing sound judgment. People you might not expect to find in the house of wisdom, but who really need to be there. Wisdom's invitation is open to everyone who accepts the invitation to be wise. Wisdom welcomes all without condition. She invites everyone to take in and act with the good gifts she offers. She calls on us, come, eat of my bread and drink the wine I have mixed and live. An invitation Jesus offers in our gospel reading for today. The Greco-Roman culture of the time also spoke of wisdom personified as a woman. The Greek word for wisdom is the feminine noun Sophia. Sophia was associated with the divine word of God that had creative power and guided moral behavior. The Greco-Roman term for the divine word expressed is logos, God communicating with his creation, God's message for us. As the author of the Gospel of John writes, Jesus Christ is the word, the logos, the wisdom of God expressed, revealed, made known to us. Jesus Christ makes known to us the breadth and length and height and depth of God's unending love. As John writes, in the beginning was the word, logos, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, the embodiment of God's love, God's wisdom in person the place where God joins with us so that we may join with God. He is God building his home with us forever. He is, as he says in John 6, the living bread that came down from heaven. And the bread he gives for the life of the world is his flesh. 
Jesus Christ suffered and bled and died on the cross and was buried and on the third day rose again to life, taking our sin and suffering and death as his own, giving us his forgiveness, salvation, and life eternal. He will raise us up on the last day. He will ultimately heal us and this whole broken creation. He is with us always. Through his word, he invites us to come and eat the bread that is his flesh and drink the wine that is his blood. This is an invitation that's not to be taken too literally. There were those in the Greco-Roman society of the time who mistakenly thought that the early Christians were cannibals because they misunderstood this language. They were not. Jesus is not encouraging cannibalism. But his invitation is not to be taken too lightly either. Jesus is encouraging us to take in his presence, to embrace every day with our whole being the reality of who he is and who we are in him, to incorporate the nourishment of the goodness he offers. Be fed and fueled. Live in the fullness of life. When we take in communion, we eat the bread and drink the wine, the elements in which Jesus Christ himself has promised to be present in a true and mysterious way. As he said during the Last Supper, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. When we eat the bread and drink the wine, we take in the sacrificial life-giving love of Jesus Christ. We experience the grace of God. Or put another way, as I asked my confirmation class once, what is communion? One student replied, we drink God. When we take in scripture, the audible word of God, as communion is the edible word of God, we learn who God is and who we are. We hear the good news that God, our creator, redeemer, sustainer, loves us forever. God made us and has saved us and will one day make all things new. We learn wisdom for how to live in relationship with God and each other. Live lives of integrity. Live well. I am so grateful for all the Bible verses I memorized as a kid that I can bring to mind now and give me strength and courage and comfort and hope in times of trouble. I invite you this week to memorize a verse of Scripture that may do the same for you. And if you're not sure which one, send me an email. I've got plenty of suggestions. When we gather together as the body of Christ on earth, share communion and scripture, experience the gracious presence of God, take in the good news of life in Christ, we are fed and fueled to run properly to live out the good news of life in Christ, to act with wisdom. As Paul encourages his co-workers in Christ to do in our reading from Ephesians 5 today, Paul calls on the members of the church in Ephesus. Paul calls on us to make the most of the time, to discern the will of God 
conduct ourselves as people who are wise, to be careful how we live, to be filled, to be fueled with the Holy Spirit. As King David, the father of King Solomon, puts it in our reading from the Psalms today, Psalm 24, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. There have been times in my life, including during these difficult days, when I felt like I'm running on fumes. And in my better moments, I realize this is because I haven't fueled properly. And so if you are feeling exhausted, overwhelmed, run down in these difficult days, I invite you to fuel up in body, mind, and spirit. Eat nutritious food, drink plenty of water, get a good night's sleep, go outside when it's cool enough and let the sun shine in. Take a deep breath. Reach out to family and friends. Do something that brings you joy. Put your skills in action. Paint something or build something or write something. Spend time every day in prayer, pouring our heart out, hearts out to God and creating space for the Holy Spirit to pour into you. Spend time in Scripture. If you haven't before and you don't know where to start, I suggest the Gospel of Luke. Spend time in worship, in person or online. Worshiping together, as the Apostle Paul writes, singing hymns and songs, making melodies to the Lord in our hearts, giving thanks to God. Join the feast at the table of wisdom. Take in the life-giving word of God. Accept the invitation of God in Christ by the Spirit to come and eat and drink. Be filled and fueled with the goodness of God. Live in the fullness of life. Amen. Thanks for listening. We're doing this every week, so make sure to subscribe. If you'd like more information about St. John's mission to know Christ and make Christ known, visit our website, stjohnslutheran.church. May God bless you on this day and in all the days ahead.